Hi everyone, let's take a look at number 18 on page 31. Let AB be any point on the graph of y equal to 1 over x, where x cannot be 0. Prove that the area of the triangle formed by the tangent through AB and the coordinate axis is 2. So mathematically, what they're really asking you is to prove the following. Required to prove that the area equals to 2 units square. So step one, let's draw a diagram. Now notice the scale in this diagram is going to be slightly different. We're going to zoom in a little bit. And instead of using one square for one unit, we're going to make two squares for one unit. So again, this is negative one, one, negative one, and one. When you think about the graph, y equal to one over x, this is the same idea as saying f of x equals to 1 over x. One point is going to be 1, 1. Another point could be negative 1, negative 1. And of course, you can follow this pattern, draw a couple more points. When you connect them, don't forget there's an arrow. Likewise, on the other side, when you connect them, don't forget the arrows. Also, there are two asymptotes that you have to label. One of them is the vertical asymptote. The other one is the horizontal asymptote. And again, when they say find the point AB, this is any point, any point on this graph. So AB could be here, or it could be here. It could be on the other side. It doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to pick a point. Let's say there, right? I'm going to label this as AB. And what they're really asking is the following. If I draw a straight line, such that it is tangent to AB. The area, this area, is going to be exactly two units square. So that's what they're asking. I'm going to show this to you step by step. So step two, find the general slope. So don't forget the first principle, f prime of x equals to the limit as h is approaching to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. In this case, since the function is a fraction, I'm going to factor h to the front. So 1 over h goes to the front. Don't forget the square bracket. Open a round bracket. f of x plus h becomes 1 over x plus h minus 1 over x. Now, there's one goal as you're going through the first principle, and it's always the same goal. If you're doing this right, h divides by h, that's the indicator you're one step away from the final answer. And to do that, you have to combine this as one fraction. The common denominator is going to be x plus h times x. And effectively, what you're really doing is you're taking each part and you're multiplying by the missing common denominator. So for example, in the first part, you're really multiplying it by x over x. Likewise, in the second part, you're multiplying it by x plus h divided by x plus h. So effectively, you're multiplying, uh, multiplying it by 1. You're not changing the actual value. When you expand this, be mindful. This is x minus x minus h. So I'm going to draw the arrows back in just in case. So it's not positive h. This is negative h because you have negative 1 times h. When you collect like terms, x minus x, that becomes 0. The most important part is right here. 1x from the top, 1x from the bottom. That's how you know you're one step away from the general slope. If you look at the entire numerator, this equals to negative 1. So you go back to the basic concept of limits. Step 1, you plug in x to be 0. That's going to be negative 1 divided by x times x, which is x squared. So again, this is the general slope, not the specific slope. Once you know negative 1 over x squared is the general slope, now you go back and you write down for x equal to a. m, which is the specific slope now, is going to be negative 1 over a squared. And again, you're now working with the specific slope. You also have the point, right? So if you go back and you think about x, y, in this case, it's going to be a, b. But remember, b is 
in terms of uh, a, 1 over a. So the reason why this is right is because y equals to 1 over x. So this, instead of writing down b, you can express the y component in terms of the x component, which is a comma 1 over a. So if you go back to the diagram, we could even update this and say, well, a, b is really a 1 over a. And again, this is any point on the graph. I just drew one specific point, but you could draw it anywhere else if you like. So once you have the slope, once you have the point, this goes back to grade 9 academic math, you can find the equation. So y equals to mx plus b, you're given the slope, which is negative 1 over a square. Uh, xy is going to be a and 1 over a, and you can now solve for b. Now to find b, what you do is you can bring uh, negative 1 over a squared times a to the left hand side, and this will give you 1 over a plus 1 over a, which is 2 over a. So this means y equals to negative 1 over a squared times x plus 2 over a. That is the equation of the line. I am going to use this to update my graph, but I also want to show you as an additional note how to express this in terms of standard form. So if you want to express this in uh, standard form, which is very useful as well, uh, you have to make sure that ABC cannot be a fraction, it cannot be a decimal, and A is always positive. So you can multiply everything by A squared. So that's going to give you A squared Y, which equals to negative X, plus 2A. You can bring it to one side, equate it to 0. I'm going to bring it to the left. So X plus A squared Y minus 2a. So that's the standard form. Now, back to the graph though. If you want to find the uh, equation of the tangent, we already did that, but in terms of graphing it, you can write down the corresponding x and y component and label this on the graph. Again, just be mindful. Define the x component, or not the x component, the x-intercept. Set y to be 0. Solve for x. So now, you bring this to the other side, x over a squared equals to 2 over a. You could cross 1a from each side. You could also cross multiply. So effectively, x equals to 2a. But more importantly, location-wise, it's going to be 2a is 0. So when you go back, update this on the graph first. So this point is 2a, 0. Likewise, in the second column, to find a y-intercept, you have to set x to be 0, solve for y. So this is negative 1 over a squared times 0 plus 2 over a. And again, y equals to 2 over a. In terms of the coordinate, it's going to be 0, 2 over a. Let's update that as well. So this point is going to be 0, 2 over a. And now, this is the most important part. We circle back to the beginning. Your goal is to show that the area is going to be 2 units square. So you can write down the formula for the area of a triangle, which is half times base times height. And if you look at the given, the base is right here. That's the base. And the length is going to be 2a, so half times 2a. Likewise, if you think about the height, that's going to be 2 over a. And when you multiply this, half times 2a times 2 over a is exactly 2 units square. I hope this makes sense.